There we go. How are we all today? Are we ready? Let me just make sure everything's working. Looks like it's working. Yes, perfect. So, are we ready for today's Natural Gardening Live? The last one of 2022. A little bit excited, a little bit like sad, but it's fine. We'll be coming back in January. It's not a problem. So, hello and welcome to this week's Natural Gardening Live with me, Josie Rainbird, your natural gardening coach. Um, I'm already starting with a croak. So, Bear with me today, but hopefully my voice is going to last throughout. We'll see, won't we? Um, let's have a look. So what are we talking about this week? Let me find it. Uh, this week is Natural Gardening Live. I'm talking about how you can support the soil in your garden naturally um, over the winter months to make for a happier and healthier and more productive spring. So this is what we're talking about today. Hopefully you enjoy it. So... Da, 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 da. Let me turn that off. Make sure things are going okay. After the teething issues we had last week, we are good. Perfect. Okay, so we're talking about the keys to making your garden easier um, or gardening easier in the new year and the key to a resilient and healthy um, and minimal care garden. So, so we're going to be talking about today. Um, right, so. As we go through today, if you've got any questions, any comments, anything like that, please feel free to post as we go. Um, I will pick them up at the end. If not, I will pick them up after the live and I'll answer them as I see them. So if you're catching after the live, catching on replay or whatever, please feel free to keep posting, keep commenting, because I will pick them up as I see them. So that's fine. Um, and I'll reply as I see them. So that's perfect. So, so the soil is the foundation to your garden. So this is what we're talking about today, the soil. So we're looking after the soil. So it's the foundation of your garden. And by simply looking after the soil when it needs your support the most in the winter months, um, you can make a massive difference to the health of your garden. So just looking after your so soil, 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 I can't talk, see, it's dreadful. Just look after the soil, nothing else. This will make, um, this is really important. So it can make such a difference to the health of your garden, make life so much easier for you as a gardener as well. So just looking after the soil, particularly in the winter. So in the winter months, um, it can be challenging as we have, as we have seen, as we have seen, words are hard, um, over the last few weeks when the cold weather has really hit, um, you can see the damage it can do to the soil, um, especially as the weather starts to thaw and the rain starts to come through as well. So it's really bad. So winter months can be challenging for the soil in your garden. They'll be very damaging. Um, not only that, it looked, um, if it's not looked after properly as well, it can cause even more damage as well. So really important to look after the soil. And the cold can play a big role in damaging um, throughout the winter, damages soil throughout the winter. But as mentioned in, um, I think it was either last week, so we paused live, um, it can actually offer quite a few benefits as well. So if you've missed that one, I will link um, this live will be in the playlist anyway. But look back at the Natural Gardening Live playlist and that will be in there for you to, re to catch up on replay. So you better learn something from there. So... Yes, so the winter can offer some benefits as well as to cause damage to your soil. So don't write it off completely as a bad season. It can offer some nice benefits as well. So once the soil drops below a certain temperature, so this is about seven to 10 degrees thereabouts, which we've, we've consistently been in for the last few months. Um, I think today was the first time in easily eight weeks, I would say, that we've been over 10 degrees and where we are in the south of England. Um, so yeah, consistently, once the, temp the soil drops below a certain temperature, so it drops below seven to 10 degrees, um, the soil will start to see feel the effects of winter. So the inf um, insects and invertebrates that live in the soil will slow down, and they'll start to die off as well, which isn't good. The soil structure will freeze or start to freeze and like solid, solidify start to solid, that's not English, solidify, um, start to freeze. And the plants living in the soil will stop growing and germination will be put on hold. So this is what happens when the soil temperature drops below a sort of seven degrees consistently over a period of time. This will all sort of start to happen. Everything will slow down and stop. The, as I say, the insects, the life living in the soil will start to just slow down and then die off slowly. So that temperature is the gauge point as soon as it gets rise in the spring we get above that temperature sort of ten, seven to ten degrees that's when the growth starts and germination will kick in and everything starts to start moving in the soil again 
So that's the point, really. That's the tipping point for your soil, seven to 10 degrees. <clears throat> Excuse me, hang on. <coughs> Craig, hang on, hang on. Let's have a look. Right, so yes, so plants living in your soil, the germination will start to be put on hold. Um, so I've spoken about the ecosystem in the soil many times before because it is an incredibly important part of your garden. As an overall, the ecosystem overall in your garden, the soil ecosystem as its own component is really important. As I say, the soil is the foundation to your garden, so that's how important it is. Um, so I've talked about it lots of times and I will share the a playlist I've got for Soil Care, which has got all the videos I've done on anything sort of soil in. I will share that in the description. I'll post it in the group. So if you're catching me from the Natural Garden Coaching group, I will post it in there for you. And I'll post it in, if you'll catch me on YouTube, I'll put it in the description for you as well so you can catch up both places. So that's fine. If you're on YouTube, I'll also link the um, link to the group as well. So you can join if you want to. So I've spoken about the ecosystem lots of times, the soil ecosystem, not just the ecosystem, the soil ecosystem, lots of times before. And as I said, I've done lots of videos on it as well. So it's the strength of your garden. It is very important. It's the foundation, as I say, it's the foundation of your garden. Um, so to paraphrase <laughs> some previous videos that I've done, um, with good soil comes strong comes a strong and healthy garden. I was nearly going to say with great power comes great responsibility, but that's not right either. Um, the, with good soil comes strong and health comes a strong and healthy garden. So that's how important the ecosystem in the soil is to your garden. So during the winter, um, the soil needs your help the most. So there is lots of ways that you can support the soil in your garden, but there are a few key ways that I wanted to talk about today if you let me, um, I'll talk about today, which will make the soil care, especially in the winter months, much easier and less, much less stressful for you. So point number one that I wanted to make today was understanding the type of soil that you have in your garden is key. That is the first step that if you have a new garden, if you are moving house, if you are a new gardener and you haven't really paid any attention to your garden before, First step is understanding what type of soil you're working with, because this will make your life so much easier and care of your garden and making care easier for you. So let me know in the comments if you have or do know what type of soil you've got in your garden. Um, if you know the pH, fantastic. But do you know actually what type of soil that you've got? Um, so I will talk you through this in a second to find out how it is, how you find out what type of soil you've got if you haven't already so let me know in the comments if you know um and if you want to know so i've lost where i am already this is me let me know in the comments. there we go <laughs> if you we'll get there people we'll get there if you have not taken the time to know the type of soil you have it's definitely worth doing as I say, your garden is actually uh, may actually have several different types of soil in it, depending on the age of your garden, the like the history of your garden, um, and where how it's built. Um, yeah, so there can be different types of soil in different areas of your garden, in different pHs as well in different areas of your garden. So it's really worth looking and um, maybe digging around in different areas of your garden to find out what type of soil you've got in different spaces. So maybe worth doing. Um, if you've got a big garden. As I say, if you've got a big garden, it's worth checking um, top and bottom of your garden. Or if you've got clear, um, defined areas, like you've got a wooded area, or um, if you've got more of a meadow kind of space, that kind of thing, it's worth checking because they will be in the touristy kind of different types of plants growing there, leading to different types of soil. So it's worth checking different spaces in your garden, especially if you've got a big garden. <clears throat> So a simple way to test the soil type that you've got um, is by digging a hole. <laughs> don't, don't mean to sound patronising right now, but it is to big, dig a hole. So it can be a small hole, so you can do it with a trowel, or you can do a slightly bigger hole with a spade, whatever you want. So if you use it with the, with a the spade, um, a really good way of doing it is like using the spade as a gauge. So you do like spade blade wide, like square. So blade, blade to make it square. How else better to say it without having a spade in my hand to show you? Um, so you can either do, do it with a trowel if you've got smaller space or do it with a spade if you want to do something a little bit bigger. Granted, with the freezing temperature that we've had recently, it might be quite difficult to be able to dig a hole in your garden. 
um, the soil in our garden is fairly solid and you don't really want to disturb the, um, as I say, the ecosystem in the soil at the moment. It will be suffering on its own with the freezing temperatures. So to dig it up might do some more damage. So this might be worth doing if you're thinking about doing this now. Do it in the spring when everything starts to thaw and um, wake up again and get happy and moving. So just leave it a little bit. But it's definitely worth doing. So dig a hole. And with the earth that you dig out the hole, so however you do it with a sprayed or a trowel, with the earth that you dig out the hole, take some in your hand, your glove, if you want to wear gloves, take some in your hand and look at it. Just look at it. Um, so you can look at the consistency and the colour. You can look at um, what the makeup of it is. So you can clearly see from this first step um, whether you've got clay soil, sandy soil, silty soil, chalky soil or loamy soil. You can clearly see this by the way um, it looks. You can just see. So observe. Have a look at the soil you have in your hand and see if you can identify what you think the type of soil that you've got. Um, next would be you give it a squeeze. <laughs> squeeze the soil in your hand. Now, if it clumps together, if it sticks together, you know it's going to be more clay soil. If it crumbles, like the second you release it, it doesn't stick at all. You're going to have more sandy or maybe even silty soil. Um, so I can't talk today, it's very full. Silty soil. Um, if it doesn't stick, or it, it, sorry, if it sticks together and then crumbles when you break it up with your fingers. So if you squeeze it, it's stuck together and then you can break it up really easily, just like releases. Um, that would indicate you've got more loamy or silty soil. So these, again, they are really good indicators of what, what type of soil that you've got. If you want to get into um, more technical terms of it, you can get soil testing kits so it can tell you what the pH is of your soil, what the mineral content is of your soil, um, what it's lacking and everything like that. So you can buy those online. You can get them in garden centres as well. You can get basic ones that tell you the pH and a few mineral content levels of minerals. Um, you can get those in the garden centres, but you can get more advanced ones online. So they're good as well. Um, but they just give you a little bit of background as to what you're dealing with. But just understanding the type of soil you've got, to so say like whether you're clay soil, sandy soil, loamy soil, anything like that, that will really give you a good um, starting point when it comes to soil care in your garden and what plants will thrive as it goes. So it's a really good starting point for you. <coughs> oh dear. And it's nearly Christmas and I've got a sore throat. <laughs> okay, there's people with more worse colds than I've got, but it's fine. Okay, um, so setting kits, it's understanding the type of the soil. Just going down my notes. Right, so each type of soil, as I say, needs a different type of or kind of care as well when it comes to it, a different way of conditioning the soil, different um, needs. It will have different needs. So as I say, also different plants will thrive in different types of soil as well. So this is really important. So if you're struggling to grow a happy and healthy and vibrant garden, this might be why. If you don't understand the type of soil you've got, you might be growing the wrong type of plants um, or not supporting the plants in the correct way. So understanding this will really help. So once you know, it'll all become clear. So that was point number one of a way of um, taking care of your soil, supporting your soil as you go into the winter. Knowing what type of soil you've got it's a really good first step. Um, so veg patch cover crops. So this doesn't just apply to the veg patch, but this is what I've concentrated on because it's easier <laughs> to explain. So um, growing cover crops such as green manure in your veg patch. Let me know in the comments if you've grown green manure. Very, very beneficial um, plant seed to grow in your veg patch. Many, many benefits to it. So um, a growing the cover crop such as green manure in your veg patch can provide a variety of benefits for the soil in your garden, or in your veg patch in particular, but in your garden. And um, providing nutrients, um, it can condition the soil, it'll prevent watering, um, we're watering, <laughs> weathering, honestly, weathering and erosion. And um, when the soil freezes, um, as through the winter time when it freezes, obviously naturally it becomes harder. So it will um, erode away as it thaws um, and maintain good levels of green and organic matter. As the crops die back in the spring, you'll, you can dig them into the ground. So that will break down and then provide a really good level of um, like 
green mulch or green um, organic matter, sorry, that to die back into the soil. So as you go into spring, it's got a really good base there. <clears throat> so cover crops are more commonly used in the veg patch. This is why I concentrated on the veg patch um, or your allotment, if you want to go with the bigger scale. So it's really good for that side of it because it will provide so many more nutrients and vegetables tend to be quite um, hungry <laughs> when you're growing them. So they can, they do need, so they're really good for that. <clears throat> But it can be used as well, and I have seen them used as well in flower beds and borders, particularly herbaceous borders or mainly annual borders as well. When you have big, vast spaces that um, have died off as the winter months start, they all die off and then you're ready to replant in the spring. Having these cover crops to see them through the winter will really help to maintain the structure and the condition of the soil. Um, replenish a bit of nutrients as well and as they get dug in in the spring like you would do with the vegetable patch as well ready to replant or ready for the um, new shoots to start coming up from the herbaceous plants <clears throat> this really does do a really good job of supporting so it doesn't have to just you know, be used in the vegetable patch or allotment you can use it in um, beds and borders as well so it's really good but cover crops can be really beneficial as well now i'm just thinking I have done a live before on things similar to a um, like green manure, included green manure. So I'll try and find that for the people in the group. I will try and find, let me just have a look and see. No, I can't see it for where I am. That's fine. I'll look at it later and I'll see if I can find it and I'll link it in the week so you can see that. But it's got a bit more information. I know I've got a bit more information on the green manure side of it. Um, I'll try and find a bit more if I can find some... Um, maybe some blogs or something on how people have used it in the garden so for the flower beds and things as well. So you can see, but cover crops are really good and they're not used enough. People don't sort of think about them so much anymore unless you're in your veg patch. So that's why I wanted to mention that today. <coughs> Here we go. Um, mulching. So now I have spoken about mulching so many times before. And I will forgive you for huffing at me if you want to huff. It's fine. But mulching is really important, and for especially for care for the soil as well, to help with conditioning, help with um, general overall soil care and the health of the soil. So mulching is incredibly underrated, should be done a lot more. So mulching is very important um, in the late, later in the autumn and the winter time. It's very good um, practice to get into. Um, it can insulate the roots of your plants, reducing stress and damage over the winter months, um, also reducing the time it takes for the plants to recover or the root systems to recover more likely, um, recover in the spring um, as they start to get growing again as well. So mulching can also help to condition the soil, provide organic matter to support the e ecosystem within the soil as well. So we say um, it gets stressed and shocked when it comes into winter, the ecosystem within the soil or get stressed, stressed, stressed and shocked. Too many S's. Stressed and shocked. And will um, so it's going to need all the help it can get. So by insulating it with the mulch, a good thick layer of mulch and um, of organic matter, this will really help to prevent that stress and shock and will help the ecosystem to like steady through the winter and then recover more efficiently in the spring. So helping the plants all take off, everything will be healthier from the word go rather than having to spend the first two to three weeks recovering before it can actually start producing buds and flowers and kicking off. So this is what we want. So all around, um, a very easy way of taking care of the soil, regardless of the type of soil you have. So if you're not sure what type of soil you've got, mulching is a really good starting point. You can just get on and um, give the garden a good mulch. And then you know that you've done something to look after the soil as you go into winter. So it's really good. This should have been alive in hindsight, should have been live. I did in the late autumn um, going into winter because these are things that, okay, as much as you can do them now, as the weather starts to warm up slightly, you can do this now and it won't do any harm to do this now except for testing the soil. I would recommend probably that in the springtime now, um, but a lot of these you can, you can still do now, but you'd get more benefit from them if you did them in late autumn before the, everything starts to freeze. So... Something to bear in mind if you ever rewatch this. Save it for the autumn time. Rewatch it then. I might reshare it then. Might be a better idea. So, yes, all around easier way to regardless of the soil type you've got. <coughs> Sorry, coughing into the microphone. 
um yes so types of what types of ways ways you can mulch your garden so you can mulch with um compost so homemade compost bought compost um you can buy bags of like mulching material as well which is like really thicker um fibrous compost so you've got well rotted manure you can use um it has to be well rotted because if you use more fresh or less rotted manure if you like fresher manure it can burn the plants and then it can affect the ph of the soil and make the soil it can day affect and damage the soil as well so well rotted is the best way to go so if you can make sure that if you're getting it from somebody else if it's not you know own animal dung heap or whatever and make sure that it's well rotted you can tell because it didn't smell so much when it's well rotted um you can also buy farmyard manure if you're concerned so that's fine from like garden centers then you know it's fine um so wood chips you can use wood chipping as well so that's good um and the leaves as well fallen leaves so like leaf mold um composted leaves so that sort of thing so if you've got leaves a lot of leaves that fall in your garden pile them up on your flower beds and they'll be they'll compost down a treat and they'll be really effective mulch <clears throat> Okay, so da, 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 da. so mulching can no, I've done that bit. Yeah, washed out in the rain. Yeah, so the one thing I did do as a little note here is mulching can also help to prevent the nutrients from the soil being leached out. So when you get lots of heavy rain or snow or anything like that, and the, the water get uh, the water, the soil gets a lot of water running through it, the nutrients can sometimes get leached out into the subsoil, um, which a lot of plants, the roots won't go down that deep, so they won't be able to retrieve it. Um, which we're talking about the and dynamic accumulators going down into the subsoil, which I've done before. They will tend to retrieve the nutrients that gets leached. Um, the rain can really do a good job of leaching good nutrients out of the soil, leaving the soil quite bare. But mulching will actually help to prevent this happening. And as it breaks down in the winter time, it'll actually replace this nutrients, any nutrients that get washed away. They'll actually replace it. So it's a really good um, process to do as well. So it just prevents anything getting lost in the subsoil. So. Where am I? Okay, so similar to mulching, uh, covering and mounding up unused beds and areas of open soil. So this could be in the form of covering the soil with compost. So say like mulching or cardboard, uh, wooden boards sometimes as well, um, or planks and things like that, and carpet. So this helps to maintain the condition of the soil um, helps to prevent any, um, as I say, nutrient leaching as well, kind of like with mulching, how that works as well. <coughs> Tickle. Reducing the risk of nutrient leaching, washed out by the rain, prevents the soil becoming compacted with the um, weather as it freezes. Um, if the soil is open and bare, it can have a risk of becoming compacted. If all the particles can kind have... Of, um, and the structure kind of gets squashed together and then um unless you conditioned it well and and it's got and it's in condition anyway when it goes into winter um it will become compacted and then it'll be really hard to um for anything to grow through it for the root systems to grow and for you to plant up as well in the spring so doing this actually um covering and mounding there is technical terms for this but covering and mounding kind of makes it you can understand what i'm saying Doing it this way will actually help to um, to uh, maintain the structure of the soil as well, which is really important. As, well. as much as um, introducing more nutrients into the soil, maintaining the structure is very important. So that was a little one that I put in there as well. So covering and mounding unused areas of open soil. So as I say, using compost, cardboard, um, wooden boarding, planks, um, carpet, anything like that, sheeting, things like that can really be really effective when it comes to um, taking care of the large open spaces. So if you've got like an allotment that you're not using um, big areas of beds, you can do this very effectively and it will prevent weeds coming up as well in the spring, which is really good. So it will give it a good chance. Once you uncover it all, it's ready to plant. So it'd be perfect. <clears throat> Dear me, where did I get to? Right, 
can tell this is well, a sore throat's got to my head got a croak going and it's just distracting me um so when it comes to your veg patch permanent planting and growing permanent fruit and veg can make a huge difference to your garden now i've spoken a lot about um, permanent permaculture permanent vegetable planting um when it comes to saving yourself money and stress in the garden it really does work quite well um although it's a little bit of an investment to start with um, you can plant once and then you don't have to touch them again and you can keep harvesting year after year. So they can last five, six years, sometimes longer as well. And, and you don't have to worry about them. You only have to invest in them once. No, just keep on going. You just need to take care of them. So permanent planting or growing perennial fruit and veg can be a, make a huge difference to your garden soil. Perennial fruit and veg can support the soil by growing um by growing a root structure to support the soil, which is really important, and it's a permanent root structure as well, You're not lifting it at all, it's going to stay there and it's going to maintain the soil structure, which is really good. Um, the roots will always be growing, um, even in the depths of winter when everything slows right down, these will keep on growing, maybe slow, but they'll keep on growing. So this will, um, so a healthy root system will support the soil structure, as they say, maintain drainage, which is really important, especially through the winter months when there's an awful lot of snow and rain and all sorts of things going on. So maintaining drainage is important. Um, we'll create a good airflow in the soil as well, which will keep the structure open and the roots need this as well. A good airflow to keep growing and staying healthy. As soon as the airflow stops, the root system tends to rot and water tends to clog the soil. All that sort of thing. So good airflow is really important and will support the ecosystem living within the soil as well, which also need the airflow, which is really good. So they can do a lot of good perennial fruit and veg. <clears throat> um, with perennial plants, you don't need to dig and replant each year, as I say, because they're there. You invest once, plant once, and you can keep harvesting year after year. So you don't have to keep digging and replanting each year. Um, they are continuously growing. This reduces the soil disturbance, which is important. If you've ever heard of like a no dig garden, um, having the fact that you're not digging or you're very minimal, minimal digging involved actually does look after the soil a lot better. It helps to develop the ecosystem within the soil, which will in turn look after your plants a lot better, keep nutrient levels up and will take a lot of the work off of you. Which is, which is what we want at the end of the day. We want a stress-free, easy care garden. No dig is a good way to go. So reduce soil disturbance and prevent soil damage by over digging. So tip number, um, no, it wasn't even tip, was it? I'm not doing tips today. Could be a tip. To call it a tip. Um, yeah, growing perennial fruit and veg. This will help no end towards um, the care of your soil as you go into winter. The, the roots alone will help to manage the soil. So it won't help the health of the soil. So it can definitely reduce your work when it goes into the garden. But it's very minimal, um, very minimal work involved, if anything, to, for perennial fruit and veg. And then a little bit of an investment to start with. <clears throat> Let's have a look. Where did I get to next? So... Yeah, by growing perennial fruit and veg, you can also lengthen the growing season. This is the other one I wanted to put in there. Lengthen the growing season um, with minimal intervention needed. So that's really good. So becoming a lot more practical and common to include more perennial fruit and veg in your garden rather than sowing and growing new annuals each year. This might be a bit of an investment, as I say, but it does help to reduce the amount of work that you need to put into your garden. So a few options, I've got a few options here as well, which I know I've spoken about before and I will try and find the blog post that I've done on them as well. So a few options for perennial fruit and veg would be things like rhubarb, asparagus. Asparagus is a good one if you can grow that in your garden because it tends to be quite expensive if you buy it in the supermarkets. Um, rhubarb, asparagus, globe artichokes, which are coming back into fashion, which isn't great. Um, for fruits like strawberries, blackberries and raspberries as well, which in the south here, um, we grow quite readily just in the hedgerows. Um, not so much strawberries, I will say, but yeah, but blackberries definitely. Um, so yes, they grow really well down this way, but they're very effective um, perennial fruits. And as I say, asparagus and globe artichokes are really good if you can grow those in your garden as well to save you a fortune. <clears throat> so much you can do with a globe artichoke as well. If you can see on TikTok, it's good. 
<laughs> I was surprised considering how they were um what's the word like not demonized but you know people wouldn't look at a globe artichoke and now there's loads of things going on things you can do with a globe artichoke so who knew who knew okay so as I say that was a little bit of a tangent going on to perennial fruit and veg but the way that that supports the soil is important so that was my five ways that you can let me see what I exact wording Da, 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 da. five ways that you can support the soil as we go through in as we go into winter into the winter months to keeping your garden happy and healthy and productive going into spring so i will as we are going through anything that i've mentioned any videos or playlists or blogs anything like that that i've mentioned as we're going through I'm just seeing if there's anything i've missed to say um i will link in the description if you're watching on youtube and in the group if you're catching me in the group so that's fine. Um, so look out for those. Um, I'll try and put them in the comments as well so you can find them easily in, in either way so you can see that. Um, yes, I will try and find the bits on the green manure as well so you can see those because that's really important. So as I say, yeah, went off on a little bit of a tangent, but hopefully you've learned something and um, these will help you to support the soil more effectively. Even if you start doing them from the springtime, you can still use the same principles and understand. It's well worth finding out what type of soil that you have got before you start to try and um, work out how to take care of your soil and condition your soil and that sort of thing. Starting off with how what type of soil you've got is really important. This will also help you to understand what type of plants will grow and thrive in your garden as well. So that's really important as well, because if you're growing the wrong type of plants for the soil that you've got in your garden, whether it's the pH, whether it's sandy soil and you're um, if you're clay soil and you're growing plants that like deserts then they don't like to be waterlogged um, it's going to cause a lot more stress for you more work for you as well they're not going to thrive they're not going to they're not going to want to live in the in the garden in the soil that you've planted them in so it's going to cause you a lot more problems so understanding the type of soil you've got will help you to understand what plants will thrive in your garden and if you how you need to condition the soil as well so this is a really good place to start. So by all means, in the springtime, when the soil thaws out and everything starts to grow again, try and find out what type of soil that you've got. Use the techniques that I mentioned at the beginning to work out. I will do the techniques. I'll try and do them as a short as well. So you can pick those up um, in, a, in a shorter video. So I'll try and do that later if I can and post it for this week so you can see. Um, but yes, that's a really good place to start. So say... Any resources or videos or anything I've mentioned, I will post in the comments um, and description, sorry, and in the group. So you can check that out. And I think that's it for this week. If, yes, got any questions, please continue to comment below. Um, I will keep an eye out. And if I see them, I will, com I will reply as I see them. So that's perfect. I will catch you now on, when's the next one? I think it's the 10th, whether the Tuesday is after the new year so the 10th is the next natural gardening live so yeah so this is the last one for 2022 sad but exciting because we'll see you in january so have a wonderful evening i will um, look out for all the bits in the week and i'll see you next year see you later